I'd like to thank everybody for uh, attending us here today, you know, at the NWFA Demo Theater. We've had a, I think it's been a great show. Hopefully everyone here is having a great show. We've got a great attendance. Um, it's been fun so far. So we are with uh, Palman USA, and what we're going to demonstrate today and talk a little bit about is our uh, Magic Oil product. But we also make a lot of other great products out there. So please, we're at booth uh, 1134. So anytime this afternoon or tomorrow, please stop by, talk to our team, learn a little bit more about our company, a little bit more about our products. So if you can uh, stop by, we'd greatly appreciate it. Magic Oil is a two-component hardened oil. I know there's a lot of discussions you hear about hard wax oils, okay, but there's a difference. A lot of hard wax oils are film forming. Okay, this is a hardened oil, two-component. It does have a small percentage of wax, but it is a hardened oil. And it does, you can see the pictures, pretty good that it does penetrate into the wood, okay? And that's how these type of products work, is to penetrate into the pores where they can properly harden, and then you remove the excess off them, you still get commercial grade durability, you get great performance, okay? But it's not a film forming finish, okay? It's a natural penetrating. With our products, um, the neutral that we have some of the colors on here that we can uh, go through later is less than five VOCs, and then our colors are less than nine VOCs. Okay, there are some, uh, it's an organic product, it's a natural product, so it does contain some of the volatile organic compounds, but very low, right? When you walk outside and breathe in the air, you're breathing in three or four VOCs to begin with. So these type of products, not gonna have any effect on you, um, or, you know, but very, very green in the industry. They are a matte appearance, matte sheen, okay? A lot of penetrating oils, because they penetrate in, we don't create a film, hence we can't create a sheen. So it is a matte finish, there are some ways to kind of get it to a little bit more of a satin sheen, which we'll show a little bit uh, with the buffing process. The neutral cures in 12 hours, and the colors fully cure in 24 hours. So it's very fast turnaround on the job sites. A lot of uh, commercial projects, things like that, that are sensitive to time, where traffic is going to get on immediately. Hey, this is a great product for it because it's going to be fully cured by the next day. Ease of maintenance, we're going to go through that at the end, but I'll say it now just because it's up there. A lot of uh, natural oils kind of get a bad rap because of the concern of maintenance, that you have to maintain them and you spend a lot of effort on them. They do require maintenance, but ours is very simple. We have a cleaning kit, palm and hard floor cleaner, and that's cleaner is good for most hard surfaces. Okay, you can clean your countertops, your tile floor, your hardwood, but also it's good for magic oil. And we kind of require it for magic oil because it's very, very low solvents. It doesn't affect it. Some competitors, cleaners out there are higher in solvents and it'll start breaking down the, the product. Okay, so our cleaner, which is very good, streak free, residue free, and then magic oil care. Okay, you use the same microfiber to apply it. It's so easy, a homeowner can do it. You're not gonna, you know, have worry about uh, sheen inconsistencies or anything like that. Okay, it's very easy, very forgiving, and that just replenishes the oils, replenishes some of the waxes to keep it looking new. Typically in a, in a homeowner house, you're uh, one to two times a year. And if they properly do that, you're gonna have many, many years of a, of a beautiful looking floor, looking new and great longevity. Some of the commercial projects you may need to go to uh, once a month, once every six months. It's very subjective to the wear and the amount of traffic, but easy to use, no buffer required. Just microfiber it on, let it dry, and you're done. What we're going to talk about today is we hear quite a bit um, that we only have six colors, right? We have the, uh, the red, brown, dark brown, black, white, gray, and then neutral. Okay, but just because six colors doesn't mean that we can't combine them. Okay, you can combine them to make a plethora of colors. And one of them that we're going to show is we just mixed uh, a little red, brown with, uh, with black kind of gives a little bit of a rosewood appearance. Okay, we can make many colors. In the middle there, um, we're gonna show, this is a stained panel that we used a uh, competitor's uh, solvent-based stain. Magic oil can go over solvent-based or water-based stains. Okay, we know a lot of contractors and designers, you're, you're stuck on the, the popular names, right? That you know what a provincial is, you know what a coffee brown is, and that's hard to sometimes take a sheet with different names of kind of different colors. Well, our advantage here is you can use one of your standard stains there, achieve that color, and then put the neutral on top, okay, to keep it true. Or we can put the black on top to create a different color. There's a huge a range uh, assortment of what we can achieve with these colors, but we keep it simple. That way you don't have to stock or inventory so many different colors or worry about so many. Hey, you just have six of them, and we can achieve a lot, 
or you can have the stain that you probably already have in the warehouse there or in your, your design room and then put the neutral on top. The third panel, what we're doing is we can do a, a two-tone effect, which is very popular in trying to match your, your pre-finished floors. You know, homeowners want you to match this certain color, this certain style, okay, but you say, ah, but you have a site-finished floor. Sorry, the one on the right uh, a little harder to see. But basically what we did is uh, we put down um, the Magic Oil Black, the Magic Oil Gray, and then our Neutral. And what we're going to do is put, uh, actually that's brown, sorry, Magic Oil Brown. Uh, we're going to put the white on top to kind of show you the two-tone effect. Okay, you can put one of the colors down, wait 24 hours till it's fully cured, and then put another color on top of it to create another arrange and assortment of what... Uh, what type of appearance you're, you're wanting to choose, we can do all of those. I'm going to go through the procedures real quick, just kind of verbalize them, and then when Tommy takes over, Tommy is our magical guru. He is our uh, kind of an East Territory uh, manager there. Um, but when he's going to also talk about the procedures, so we don't want to just keep repeating ourselves and reiterating uh, too much of the point. But basically, all you need to do is get the material on the floor. Okay, we can do it either with a stainless steel trowel, you can do it with a buffer. As a buffer application, we're standing up the whole time. We allow it to penetrate for 10 to 30 minutes, wide range. If you go a little bit longer, that's okay. okay we keep an average of 10 to 30 minutes, and then we remove the excess with a, a red pad and get right back on it and do the white pad. Okay? Our system is a two-coat system okay, to make sure that the, the, the pores are fully penetrated, that we have 100% absorption. You can get right back on and do that second coat immediately, or you can wait the next day or two days or two weeks, doesn't matter, to get that second coat. Okay, like I said, I'm going to go by through them very, very quickly. And then, uh, Tommy, please take over. All right. This first color is a color of red-brown, black mixed. I'm just going to walk out into the floor. Pour some down in the puddle. Take our trowel, cut in up against the baseboard, With the trowel, it's very easy to install, very easy to cut in all the way around the walls. It's very simple, very fast, actually. We just take it, trowel it in. If you got a little bit extra, you're going to be okay because we're going to be buffing that off in just a few minutes. A little bit more on here. Work it in. I know a lot of guys don't like the trowel, but the trowel is really a good, efficient way to put it on, put the right amount on. And once you do a job or two, you become very proficient at it. I've got too much on here. There's no floor vents here, so I guess I'll just pick it up. You see, somebody got it. All right. You can see it's relatively easy, really easy actually, just to pick up the extra. So we're gonna let this sit. If we were doing a large job, of course, we, the trial man would just keep rolling and the buffer man would look at his watch in 10 minutes and he's gonna start. So I'm gonna take the neutral now and apply it to the stained areas. Try to get a little bit of this color off. Same thing. Pour it out. This is a large room. You can make time. But it's so it's such an easy product to use. And the fact that we're as we're doing here, we're putting it down on stain panels, sky's the limit. Somebody out there is gonna come up with a with a new color we haven't thought of. Weight combinations. Oh. 
Here again, no more floor vents. All right, one of the things that he's doing there, I know it's a smaller panel, and you start thinking about, well, what if you're on the, the floor, okay? You can walk in this product, okay? If you have a little bit of dust, dirt, debris, things like that, that's not a big deal, okay? Each, uh, each liter that we package this also comes with booties, okay? So when you trial it on there, obviously you don't want to be uh, getting your knees in there. That's going to be a little messy, all right? But it's not a big deal if you do. So when you trial it on, we can put on our little booties, and then you walk right back on it with the buffer. It's not going to make any issues, any color marks, or any, uh, any problems with the finish. Okay, so a little bit of dirt, a little bit of dust, not a problem, and we walk right on it. So now we got those two on. They're sitting and absorbing in, diffusing their cells into the wood. Go ahead and roll them with the white. Yep. We're gonna let the other ones penetrate a little bit. That way we can show the, uh, the removal process. So we got your black, gray, and then our brown. Of course, as Kelsey said, you need to wait 24 hours. If you try to do this in one day, it's just going to melt it, and you're going to get a blend of those two colors. So we're going to pour a little out, and this is a really neat effect. And this is where you guys out there that are good with colors. Also, our product, you could add tints to these products, small amounts, make sure there's, they're mixed up and modified a little bit. You can take the white and do all types, purple, green. This panel has been water popped, so it's going to take the intensity, it's going to be higher than if you did not water pop it. You see that I've got a few areas where I got a holiday that's going to be okay when I buff. It's going to lay in there, send it over. Yes, you could use a buffer. You could use a buffer for the second coat, and a lot of times I do. That way you can see what boards are dry and what boards need some more product. You see if you've missed any spots. It's very universal. One of the questions is you have to use the trowel. Um, I know it's a little different on the panels, but the trowel is the best way. Uh, it is pretty fast. You can get up to the baseboards. You can get under, under toe kicks. But what you're doing is you're pushing the oil into the wood, and then you're already scraping a lot of the excess off. Okay, So you're already doing part of the procedure by just doing the trowel method. Now, if you don't want to be on your hands and knees and you don't want to be doing that type of work, if you've got a hand scraped or a rustic or something with bevels, things that you don't want to really be dumping the material in there, you can do the stand-up buffer method where basically on the red pad you can just pull the middle out, put that down on the floor, pour your puddle in the middle, and then just start buffing it. You know, it takes a little bit to get a little saturated, but once the pad's saturated, then you just start spreading the material around and you're applying it there. Okay, then you let it sit the 10 minutes up to 30, do a clean red pad, clean white pad to remove it. So we're, we're obviously skipping the time. I know everyone wasn't, doesn't want to sit around for 10 minutes and watch the, the material dry, but uh, while we do that, just let it sit for a little bit on this panel here and we can look afterwards. Uh, please feel free to come up and ask questions. With the colors here that Tommy did, you see a kind of a two-tone effect in a lot of them. The only difference on that is water popped and non-water popped. Okay, this product, you don't have to water pop it. Okay, we do want it absorbent. We don't want it sanded too fine, right? We do want typically an 80 grit big machine up to 120 grit on a, a rotary buffer, on your standard buffers. Um, but just the, the color difference that you can get by water pop to non-water pop is already dramatic right there. So there, all of those color combinations of what we're showing, plus water popping or not, we can create a plethora amount with just the six colors. I'd say go ahead. Yeah. All right. So we get in here, we're going to start buffing off. One man's going to, buffer man or a helper is going to come around and get where the buffer can't go. You can see on these panels, it doesn't matter if you miss a little bit of a spot, 
It doesn't matter if it's uh, there's a thick area or a thick puddle. This product is so forgiving, it's gonna it's not gonna penetrate too deep and give you that color difference. And when you go through with the buffer, the buffer method here will start really uh, evening everything out. So we're basically just picking it up, got it on here, and I'm just gonna work it in. And let's go work work my way out of the room and try to get all the excess I can off. It's just buffing. Very, very easy to do. You get more money for this type of work. Makes you only two coats. It doesn't matter if you go with the grain, cross the grain, super fast, super slow, one hand, two hand. Um, it does not matter. It's that forgiving, that easy to use. It's very stress-free product, very stress-free application. As we know, most contractors were standing there with one hand on the buffer, the other on the telephone, you know, or you got the drink in the hand. It's that simple. So, got that red pad on. We picked up all we can get up with that. Pull this back. We'll add up, add cane. You'll see that we've got residue. Just get that. The object here now is to get it off, so we don't want to ruin a white pad right off the start. We got that off. Come back with a white pad now. If you've got multiple guys, multiple buffers, one guy on the red pad, one guy on the white pad, one guy on the trout, maybe one guy cleaning up, right through the job, start to stop. No one stops. Everybody goes to the end. You can really make good time, and when you make time, you make money. The red pad does the initial removal. It gets most of it. And then the white pad does the final kind of little bit of a polishing effect and then gets all any little excess just to make sure it's even out, any little drips or slings that you've created with the red. Uh, typically, you can get uh, anywhere from 250 square feet per side or I guess 500 feet per pad or more. If you trowel it, you get better coverage because it's less material that you're starting to take off. If you do the buffer method, it's a little bit less pads. So you do want to make sure you incorporate uh, the, the, the pads into the, the, the price. Okay, that you're not, when you do a bid, that uh, you're going to go through some. But typically, one red and one right per 500 square feet is, uh, is about the estimate. Yes, sir. The question was, if, if you have a sanding line that maybe you notice now, can you go ahead and sand it off and have it blend in? Yes. Yeah, you want to you try to stay within the same grit sequence because you kind of treat them a little bit like a stain. So if you did a final cut on an 80 grit big machine and a 120 grit on a screen, obviously you don't want to be taking a, a palm sander with a 220 grit and doing that real quick. Um, if it's wet like this, it, it, it blends. Okay? If it's already dried, then you want to make sure you're within the same sequence. But it's just a general rule to try to stay within that same sequence to begin with, just for safety. But yeah, you can do it while wet. And if you get dust, anything like that, and while you're doing it, it's not a big deal. It's not going to affect anything. You will never get a call with hair, trash, or particulate in this product. It's not going to happen. So that's one thing to look for, because we know on other products we can have that. Let's see if it'll drive. It should be fine. Of course, this is a neutral. Can't stand that. What he's doing here, and we'll go ahead and show the screen. Go ahead and put the screen on there because we know with drive plates, and when you flip the pad, you don't want to get the drive plate uh, coated with magic oil. So you have a, a standard drive plate right there, a drive pad with a white pad, and then just take an old used screen, and that way it'll hook up to the, the red pad or the white pad so you can flip them, right? And then you're not going to get your drive plate, uh, get it saturated or something if you're going to go do a waterborne or another type of finish on the next job. You've got to keep it clean.
And what you're gonna kind of see here when he's getting it off, the color stayed the same. The neutral stain does, or the neutral of the magic oil does kind of make the, the stain a little bit more vibrant, okay, but the color stays the same. So if you have your charts or you're used to seeing, uh, or your, your displays, but you're used to seeing the, the standard names out there, it's gonna keep the color the same. Okay, so if someone picks out a certain, they want a provincial, which I think is one of these colors, you put the provincial down, make sure it's fully dry, magic oil neutral on top, it's still provincial. Okay, but that way we have that custom stain that the, uh, the customer is wanting. With our product, you have a long time. I mean, we've got 35 minutes, 45 minutes of hot light. Once you get it out on the floor, relax, you slowed it down. Just take your time and start and try to keep that 15 to 30 minute period out there so you get your rhythm going just maintain that from one end of the job to the other it's very easy do not have to do small sections five six hundred feet trial that out no problem keep going because of the forgiveness and being a, a diffusive product of penetrating oil where Tommy was saying about, about doing one liter at a time, if you have a, a thousand foot floor, you can just mix up one liter and do 500 feet. It doesn't matter, you don't have to tape it off. If you overlap a little or you're a little crooked on your lines, that's okay, okay? Because when you come back and do the second liter, you can, it blends right in, touches right up to it. If you overlap, it's not a problem. It's not gonna be a color difference. So very forgiving, very stress-free. The buffer method for scrape and those type of products with the trowel wouldn't work very well. You just don't want to get in a habit like you would putting stain on and taking it off. You've got to have that time for it to penetrate. So there's a case where your two buffers would be better. One man would just apply it and one man would come in behind and take it off. This thing's rolling over the edge, so it picks up material and puts it down. It wouldn't be this hard in real life. Of course, we have walls and doors too, right? So I got a little bit, that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and stop, change pads. Go to the white now. Take this white pad, same process as the last panel, just try to get it all off. Walk your way out of the room, leave no footprints behind. Sometimes we get asked if you want to skip pads. If you just go to the white pad, it's going to clog up a little too quickly. If you just do the red pad, you're not going to pick it all up. So it is important to have both, to do the red pad first and then jump right back on with the white pad. Good, it is that easy, okay? It really is that easy. Stairway, same thing, take the trowel, cut them in, little rag, wipe your edges, go all the way to the bottom, turn around, walk up to the top, right through the middle of it, Start buffing it back off by hand or either use a little polisher like you would compound your car. Slow it kind of a slow speed around a thousand. Buff that right off. Just same process, smaller tool. You can do it by hand, but you're gonna get a little bit better result with the, some type of a buffer machine. So there we go. There's So that's the first coat on, go back the second day, put the second coat on, or you can turn right around and put the second coat right on top of it. Mm. 
Now this is a pretty cool effect, and you can do this with, uh, with all of the colors. But this way, when you get that base color down in there, and then putting the white on top, you could put gray on top, of course, but that really just gets into the soft grain and gives you that two-tone appearance. A lot of times where you could only get with pre-finished woods, pre-finished floors, and I know there's other manufacturers coming up with more and more ways and systems, but this is pretty easy. Just apply one coat one day, come back the next day and apply the next coat, and you get a two-tone appearance. A little bit heavy on the application of this, so it's going to take me a second to pick it up. You got the white. Let's say we need all. Oh, all you got is white. We got a little tan. Throw a little brown in there. There you go. There's your taupe color. Put maybe put a little black in there. You guys, I know you're good with colors. You can make a lot of colors out of what we have. It's going to harden on there and look exactly like it did when you left to, to go home. It's I'll going to lay on there thick. Because uh, uh, the question was, he asked what happens if you apply it on and then wait overnight before you, you buff it off. Um, like Tommy said, it, it, it's going to be too hard. You're not going to remove any of the excess. It's going to get pretty stiff. But it's a good fix. Uh, an easy fix is just come in with, uh, say, a, all right, sorry, I was going to wait for You can just take, a, like, say, a 150 or 120 grit screen and just screen the floor and then go back to normal. Go back to your normal process. Very easy to repair, easy to fix that way. Sometimes it happens. You have to leave a job site for an emergency. Your buffer breaks down. You don't have to re-sand the floor. You just come back the next day, screen it, and then reapply the coat, and you're good to go. You see I have a little swirl still on here. We'll easily get this with the white pad now. I said this, this panel was water popped and when you're doing these two tones you're going to get a little better job. You're going to get if you do water pop. Now we did hit our 30 minutes here but we are the last uh, demo here so we can leave these panels out for a little bit. When he's done, please feel free to come look at him, uh, ask us questions. And if you can't do that now, we'd, we'd definitely appreciate uh, you visiting our booth at 1134 over there for Palman. Anything else you want to add, Tommy? No, other than if charge charge for this product so you can take time with it, enjoy doing it. It's just buffing. And make some money. All right, well, thank you for your time. We appreciate uh Everyone being here, thank you. And please let us know with questions and come up and take a look at all the, uh, the colors here in the panels. Thank you.